In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is one. Amen. Christ is born. Let us glorify him. Begin by reading Galatians chapter 1, verses 11 to 19, and then Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 to 23. And you'll see in this that we could call the Lord the career wrecker, because he is great at wrecking people's careers. People often ask me to pray for their careers, that they get some sort of promotion, that they get recognised by their boss, that they sort out the problems in their career. And when I do so, I often think, well, actually, the Lord seems to have no interest at all in people's careers. He is a career wrecker. You only have to think about those fishermen walk by the side of the Sea of Galilee. Leave your nets, come follow me. Or Matthew, the tax collector, who leaves his tax booth and follows Christ. Or even, even, the son of Timaeus, Bartimaeus, who has to give up his begging business and follows the Lord on the way to the cross. The Lord is a career wrecker. And here in these two readings, we have two other people whose careers are absolutely wrecked. The first is St. Paul. He says, he's boasting, and he's got a lot to boast of, that he was in advance in Judaism, well beyond those of his own age. He had a great teacher, a man called Gamaliel, a very, very, very good teacher indeed, still used and referred to in Judaism today. But what happened to Paul? Fulfilling his vocation, so he thought, as a good Pharisaical Jew. Everything is turned upside down. He can no longer see the way at all, let alone clearly. And after baptism, he's in Damascus, and escaping from there, and then in Arabia, then back in Damascus, then in Jerusalem, then all over the place, and finally gets his head cut off. Wow, that's a career. Parents probably shouldn't ask the Lord to bless their children's careers. <laughs> and then we have Joseph. What a wonderful example of humility he is. He takes into his home this young woman who has been working in the temple until now. He marries her, or rather is betrothed to her, and he seeks to find a way through the problem for her when she is pregnant. He should have been looking forward to a glorious twilight of his life, but instead of which he has the worry and responsibility of looking after the Mother of God and the Son of God. He'd have had to put up with rumours about his wife. And then, of course, there are the difficult circumstances of the birth of Christ in Bethlehem. And then his career becomes entirely wrecked and smashed to pieces when he has to take the mother and child and go to Egypt. What on earth is he going to do there? Presumably he found work and sustenance somewhere. The Lord needed to be provided for. And then he returns to Nazareth, and the child there continues to be a tremendous worry to him. We only need to think about that trip to Jerusalem when the Lord was reaching adulthood, and the fact that he stayed behind, and the parents are enormously worried about him. Joseph's career is wrecked. But... And it's a very big but. Paul uses it. He says, but when he was pleased to reveal his son to me, his career was wrecked, but his life was made. The same is true for Peter and all the other apostles. Their careers were wrecked, but their lives were made. Eternal life was made. Joseph's career and life was wrecked, but actually his eternal life was made. And the Lord may well wreck your life too, shipwreck you completely on the rocks of the gospel, 
And when he does so, rejoice and be very glad, for your life will be made. <laughs> He'll bring you to himself. Christ is born. Let us glorify him. God bless you. Your prayers. Amen.